What do you think of that Weeby uh, Wicked Sharp? Well, I like it. It's, uh, you don't have to worry about sharpening your blade very much. It stays sharp for a long, long time. It actually comes with 24 extra blades. And let's say this one is uh, at the end of its life. You just take a pliers and lift this up over here. And you can flip this blade off and put a new one on. It's got a real good grip on its handle and it locks in place. The, it locks open and it, uh, it takes a lot of work out of the skinning process if you have a good, reliable, and sharp knife. What are, what are, with, with all the critters you've skinned over, your, you're pushing 60. So you've been skinning critters for minimum 40 years. Pretty close. Yeah, and so, and plus you've been a big game hunter your whole life. Um, in fact, you even went to uh, a guide school, and then, but then you became a successful grain farmer. I guess so. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but anyway, what are, what are your tips to minimize dulling of any knife? Well, when you go around the legs especially, and this is one of the uh, first cuts you make on your, on your coyote, slip in underneath the fur and cut from the inside out. Don't, don't go on the fur and go around like this because that'll dull a knife real quick. But if you can make that initial slice down and cut out on that, uh, that line of the white and brown fur, we cut right down that line, and then come back up here to the slit and go from the inside out, that'll save a lot of miles on that blade. Um, it'll stay sharp for a long time. Now when I get this far, then I, I got my half of the skinning done, and they go over here to the skinning machine, and, and Ed will finish them over here later. There's some pretty coyotes up in this area, and the nice white bellies and thick, and, and uh, as we get closer to December here and into December, these coyotes are going to be really a lot better yet. We have had about, oh, one out of ten maybe with some mange. Today, uh, out of uh, eleven on my line, there was two that were mangy. And uh, Ed hasn't made it back yet, so um, we're going to have a really great day today. It did get into the 70s today. I believe uh, we're, we're at about 3,500 elevation here. And it gets, you know, mid-20s at night, but it warms up nicely in the day. Well, the coyotes will move pretty good at night in the mid-20s. I mean, it's not like it's uh, really warm and they lay up that much. I was really pleased with the catch today, as warm as it was. Um, almost we were down to a t-shirt. And uh, having a good day on the line. So going back to trapping, What do you think uh, the biggest mistake new coyote trappers make? Well, I think the, uh, right away they probably think the coyote is smarter than they are. You, you don't want to overthink it. You want to give them uh, a presentation that is almost irresistible, like a, a scent post is a natural thing for them to uh, put their own scent. And if you use good equipment, and if you find coyote sign, I always like to set on sign, either scat or tracks, um, or places that you've caught before, 
Um, you're in, you're a step up on them already. You just got to get in front of them with a good quality set. And uh, now a, a dirt hole set, the, the coyote actually has a decision to make. He's not always going to be hungry. He's not always going to be um, wanting to step right down into your set. He might just know it's there, but just go around it. He might not be hungry or whatever. But if you can find a little trail where he's coming up along a crop edge, uh, you can put in a trail set or a territorial set. And at that point, the coyote really isn't making much of a decision. He's, he's just naturally doing what he does, is, is uh, marking that territorial set that you made with his own scent because he wants to leave his name, you know, that's his country, that's his area. And he's not thinking it about where he's stepping near as much as he is at a dirt hole set. He's just kind of doing his own thing, going up there without thinking, and he'll be in your trap fairly quickly. You just have to use good equipment, try to keep the equipment clean, uh, a good solidly bedded trap. You got to have that trap solid so it don't rock around.